So hey everybody, what is going on? My name is Terry. Hope you guys and gals are all doing well and welcome back to the channel. On my last video about how to get the best quality out of OBS Studio, somebody asked me, hey Terry, this is great for recordings, but I stream on Twitch. What are your recommended settings for streaming on Twitch? And I'm going to focus on Twitch in this tutorial, but keep in mind though that these settings will also work just fine for both Kick and YouTube Live, YouTube Gaming, whatever you want to call it as well but again just for the sake of this video these uh, settings here are best for twitch in my opinion so with that being said enough horsing around let's just get into it here shall we all righty folks here we go by the way if you want to follow me over on twitch it's twitch.tv forward slash hey it's terry so what settings do i use for my encoder here in obs studio to stream on twitch at the highest quality that i possibly can now keep in mind here folks that my settings might not be usable for you because your hardware might be different. Your internet upload speed might be slower than mine. So you, got, you have to take all that kind of stuff into consideration here. Okay. But first and foremost, in the output tab here in, in OBS Studio, my audio encoder is set to FFmpeg AAC, as you normally do. My video encoder is set to NVIDIA H264 because, again, I have an RTX 4080, so I use NVENC encoders whenever I can, whenever at all possible. Um, it just alleviates the load on, on, on my CPU for other things, primarily gaming, and I suffer literally zero performance loss in game because of it. You know what I mean? So whenever I'm trying to push a game up to 120 frames per second and, like, you know, Call of Duty, Apex, whatever it might be, uh, utilizing NVENC encoding is way more efficient than CPU-based X264 ever will be. So just, again, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, I always recommend you use NVENC, okay? And again, if you have an AMD or Intel-based GPU, um, you will also have your own hardware encoding options. So I would highly recommend you use your AMD encoder or your Intel encoder if you have one of those kind of cards, okay? But again, for me, I use my NVIDIA RTX 4080. So NVIDIA NVENC H264. Uh, rescale output, I don't even touch that. For my rate control, of course, it's CBR because that is what Twitch accepts. Now, I know that they've always said that, oh, if you're not a partner, you can't stream past 6,000 kilobits per second. Well, you actually can, okay? And I know that technically you probably shouldn't if you're not a partner, but literally everyone I know does this and they're not partnered, they're affiliates, but you actually do get transcoding as an affiliate. It, it might be kind of random, but nine times out of 10, it seems like these these days you, you do get transcoding. So don't worry about pushing the extra bit rate. As long as your upload speed for your internet is at least 15 megabits per second, I would recommend you go ahead and pump this thing out to 8,000 kilobits per second. And that's just so you have some you know overhead for any kind of spikes that might be there uh, from the uh, server, from your end, whatever it might be, you know? So for bit rate again, 8,000 kilobits per second. For the keyframe interval, do not leave this at zero because that is auto. Twitch recommends a keyframe interval of two, so that is what I currently use as well. Now for preset, this here can get kind of confusing, okay? For recording, I have mine set to P2 faster because that activates the dual encoders and it's just a lot better in my opinion. But for streaming, I actually keep mine here on P6, slower, better quality. Now, if you have an RTX 4000 series or a higher end 3000 series, I would actually go ahead and change this here to P6 or P7 because by default it's set on P5. And I would only keep this here on P5, let's say if you have an older generation graphics card like a, you know, a 2060 or especially a, an R, a, a GTX 1000 series. I, I, I almost said RTX 1000 series. No. But like the older, you know, 1060s, 1070s, even 1080 Ti. I know a, a buddy of mine actually does have a 1080 Ti. And anytime he pushes it past P4 medium here, he actually gets encoder lag with his NVIDIA encoder on his 1080 Ti. Now, it might be a few years old now, but let's be honest here. The 1080 Ti still is a pretty beast of a card for what it is. And the fact that it struggles with, with, with anything above P4 to P5, um, it's starting to show its age a little bit, okay? So that, that's not a big deal. Just turn some settings down and then you'll be just fine here, okay? But if you just have, let's say, you know, a 2080 or uh, more powerful, like a 2080 Ti, uh, you know, a 3070, 3080, or a course, a 4070, 4070 Ti, 4080, and obviously a 4090 or a 3090 Ti, you know, 
uh, go ahead and I would just set this here to P7, uh, to a P6, excuse me. Now you could put this on P7, but in my opinion though, I like with my vision, I can't see a difference between P6 and P7 at all. So this is just what I keep it on. Now for tuning, I go ahead and keep mine here set to high quality, that's just fine. Now for multi-pass mode, nothing fancy here. I just keep mine on two passes at quarter resolution. Um, single pass, two passes. I don't notice a big difference in quality at all with any of these changes here. So I just keep mine on two passes because that is of course the, the default setting and for me and my setup here, it works. But again, if you happen to see some encoder lag on your NVIDIA graphics card or graphics card in general, uh, go ahead and bump this down to single pass if, if you need to here, okay? But again, two passes, quarter resolution. Now for profile, I go ahead and leave this here set to high. Now this next part might be kind of controversial to some, but with, again, with my own vision here, I see no perceivable loss in quality for doing this, but I actually have a uh, cycle visual tuning unchecked here in OBS studio for my live streams over on Twitch. Um, mainly because look ahead and cycle visual tuning, they utilize your CUDA cores instead of the NVENC encoder chip that's actually on your graphics card. So in other words, whenever this is checked, uh, you're utilizing the part of the graphics card that actually, you know, processes game data and displays what you see on screen for your game. You know what I mean? Now, I'm not saying you're going to see a huge per performance hit, especially if you're on a modern three, uh, 3000 series or especially a 4000 series card. But if you have all these settings here cranked up to the highest quality possible to get the most out of that 8,000 kilobit per second bit rate, um, you might see some, some frame loss in game. And if that's the case, just come in here and uncheck this. But I actually recommend you turn it off in general because again, to my eyes, I cannot see any quality difference between having this turned on and turned off whenever I am streaming on Twitch. Now, one thing some people seem to forget to talk about whenever you're doing this whole stream setup in OBS Studio here is that video tab now, okay? Now, the rule of thumb here is that you want your base canvas to be the resolution of your primary display or the resolution that you're going to be streaming at. So for, for me, it's uh, 1920 by 1080 and the outscaled resolution is also 1080p. But let's say that you might not have that powerful of a machine or you just want to stream at a lower resolution because maybe your internet upload speed can't handle the 6,000 or, or especially the 8,000 kilobits per second that Twitch recommends or requires, right? So what you could do is you could drop this here down to a base canvas res resolution of 720p and same thing for the, uh, outs the uh, output scaled resolution as well. And because a lot of people don't, don't know this here, but this little preview window that you see of the stream here and everything, uh, that is rendered all on your graphics card before it's sent here for you to preview. And it's not that big of a load. It's really not, especially on modern day GPUs. But if you have a lower RAM card, like a lower 2000 series, lower uh, 1000 series from NVIDIA or their AMD e equivalent, uh, that's just an extra load that you don't need to put on your system if you don't need to, right? So again, what, would, what you could do here is you could set your canvas res resolution to 720p. And then you could set the output resolution to 720p as well. So that way there you're sending a 720p stream to Twitch. And that way there your, your graphics card doesn't have to do any kind of downscaling because it's already set in stone right here for you. Now, I don't recommend doing this in the output tab because from what I remember, and I'm to be brutally honest, I'm not sure if, if, if they change this here or, or not. But whenever you click rescale output right here, Instead of using the graphics card to do it, it uses your CPU to do it, even though you're telling it to use the NVIDIA encoder or your uh, graphics card encoder of some kind, right? So that's why I always say that instead of doing the rescale output here, if you have to rescale your output to 720p, 936p, whatever it might be, you want to do it here in the video tab. And frankly, it's a lot more efficient to do it here anyway, so why wouldn't you? So yeah, these are all the settings that I use to get the best quality looking stream that I can get out over on Twitch. Unfortunately, it would be higher, but they don't allow AV1 or even HEVC encoding yet, but 
As you all know, a few weeks or so ago, I did do a video talking about how Dan Clancy, the new CEO of Twitch, how he went on record saying that they're looking to implement some sort of, you know, peer to peer a transcode option or a, or a client side encode option to where whenever you're watching a stream on Twitch, your system is the one that's that's doing the transcoding, not Twitch's own servers. And whenever they finally do implement that, which is I hope in the next couple of months, I'm crossing my fingers here, whenever they implement that kind of change, that's gonna open up the door for more encoder types to be used, including AV1, because all modern hardware in the last two, three years can decode AV1. Encoding it was a different story, but decoding it, like watching stuff in Chrome, or Firefox, or whatever on modern hardware, including your smartphone, you definitely can. So hopefully they'll be able to implement that here soon, and we can finally get really high quality streams if you have the hardware capable of encoding AV1 and shipping that out to Twitch. But as per usual, though, everybody, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, do me a favor, send them in the comments below. But once again, though, y'all, my name is Terry. Thanks a lot for stopping by, and I'll catch you guys and gals next time.